Hello there, my very good friends. On today's wrestling news, Alexa Bliss pissed with WWE's lack of creative direction. I've just found out that Kushida was still there because now he's gone. <laughs> it's been a major heel turn and a tag team split on Raw. And whatever my other story was, there's a new champion, everybody. <laughs> we are very prepared today. I love it's, to see it. It's the news. Everyone's off. We're, we're a mess. It's a disaster. Don't worry. Uh, yes, let's kick things off by talking about Alexa Bliss. The hell's she doing, apart from getting married, obviously? Well, not a whole lot. Did she get married? She got married yeah, uh, last her. week. The wedding looked mental. There was crazy stuff across the board. Uh, D D Buffy the Vampire Slayer was there. What the hell? They're mates. That's weird. Uh, anyway, that's not the news. Uh, the story is it's that... It's news to me. She, she's pissed off. She's had enough. Uh, not really. She's a bit frustrated, uh, is the deal here. She's not been around a lot recently. In 2022, she had the therapy vignette at the beginning of the year. Then she oh, came yeah. back at Elimination Chamber. She wrestled for the Raw Women's title in the chamber and then wasn't seen since. Really strange direction. <laughs> uh, but Fightful Select have come through with a new report here talking about everything that's been going on with Alexa, stating that even when she was brought back at Elimination Chamber, which was in February, uh, there was no concrete creative plan for her. So they just brought her back in this match and went, I don't know, figure out later on, I guess. Well, figure out later on they did not do because she's not been back on TV since then. Uh, it's noted in the report that there were nine vignettes, sorry, up to nine vignettes filmed at the time. Obviously, not all of those aired. I think it was about four or five. Uh, so there was yet. only four or five of those aired? About that, yeah. Gee, God, it felt like more, didn't it? It wow. really did, especially when Lily started making a comeback. But uh, it's been made known to Fightful that Alexa had actually voiced her displeasure uh, in the days following Elimination Chamber. She's frustrated uh, following that pay-per-view due to the lack of creative direction. Now, she wasn't on WrestleMania. Uh, when it became apparent that she didn't have a match for this card, there were pitches for her to somehow be involved in Becky Lynch versus Bianca Belair, but these were shot down. No word on who those pitches came from. Um, but by the end of February, it was pretty much decided that she wasn't going to be on Mania. And obviously, if you're not on Mania, it's very difficult yeah. to get on TV in the lead up to that. Uh, yeah, Bliss has been very transparent about being frustrated. Nothing of substance coming through for her at all. Uh, and there's also apparently been a backstage conversation between her voicing these frustrations to Vince McMahon directly. Now, she is still noted as the second baby face, second top baby face on Raw, which is weird because she was a heel when she left and she was a heel at Elimination Chamber. So what the hell's going on with Alexa Bliss? <laughs> Sounds like not even WWE knows, so asking that question might be pointless. Yeah, um, I always like dipping in and out of these things because you'll catch wind of some utter nonsense. In this case, all those vignettes they filmed, how, how hammy they were. You could see she was trying her best. She was trying to do, she was trying to work with what they'd given her, which was steaming and smellable from outside the room. And yet you catch these, you get a little inkling into them, and then you come back in a few months later to find out that all that happened was this was nonsense that led to further nonsense, except this time the nonsense isn't even on screen, and it's just total, <laughs> total institutionalised nonsense. It's a big ball of nothing, isn't it? It's a big ball of nothing. So I, if, the thing is, if you'd asked me, what do you think Alexa Bliss did after those vignettes, I would have said, oh, probably nothing, as a joke, <laughs> and it turns out that was true. So I mean, Alexa Bliss is very talented. Yes. When they've given her runs doing anything as a heel or a face, she's very good. She's one of these people who fits WWE so well in terms of the brand of wrestling like to produce. She is born for that kind of thing. Um, how you cannot use her at a time where you've just come out of WrestleMania, so you've, you've got, everything's finished. Yep. Everything's finished. The Ronda stuff's finished. Yep. You've kind of drawn a bit of a line under Bianca and Becky. You've got like, you've got a blank canvas to work with and you've got Alexa Bliss. Surely that's just an open goal. But no. No, that's why uh, the new Raw Women's Champion is feuding with an authority figure. Of so, course, of cool. course. Speaking of open goals, uh, so this was how I genuinely found out Kushida was still in NXT this morning. Go. But he isn't anymore because the story is, according to Fightful Select, he is no longer in NXT. Now you're sitting there going, no, Adam, not more cruel budget cuts. Not more creative has nothing for you. No, it's contract just ran out. And to be fair, this might even be coming as news to WWE watching it this morning. <laughs> they find out Kushida's no longer in the contract. Um, a few little takeaways from Scott Carlson's wonderful article on this. Hadn't won a tag match all year. Hadn't won a singles match in 10 months. This is Kushida, by the way, who, I mean, 2019, he signed with a company, and 2019 was the very sort of death rattle of that era of NXT, where it was like, right, we have picked this huge star, either from Japan or from Mexico, from the Indies or somewhere, they are going to be the next guy. We'll build them up, then they'll be in the title picture, they'll be having these critically acclaimed championship matches at these unmissable takeover events, and Kushida was kind of like the last real big name who came in before they made the move to television, 
and then curled one out in the rug <laughs> and quietly died and then was reborn as this garish Mr. Motivator style horny <laughs> television show. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he didn't really do anything. He flew Cameron Grimes over a hat. He got his hands on a couple of the lower down belts, but 2.0 is not... That's not a Kushida show. The guy no. who put on incredible technical wrestling matches in the vein we used to see in NXT, but now it's just tits and teeth NXT, and he's got <laughs> neither. He's got neither. <laughs> so there's just nothing for him to do there, and he's quietly left. Yeah, he's Now, gone. I need to ask a question, because obviously I, I've been going through this art. A lot of it is news to me. Andy, what is what is Jacket Time? So Jacket Time is uh, his tag team with Ikemen Jiro, who wears a jacket when he wrestles. Yes, you have shown me this. So because you have Kishida, shown me this, yes. I guess because he has the denim jacket and the, the, the vest. And he does that a lot. He does the he does the time slitter stuff, the Back to the Future inspired yeah. stuff, I guess. They they put on jackets, they hang around, they did they they, they, they did stuff in like bathroom like they did weird poos and stuff in bathrooms. It's it's just not good. It's not good creatively. Um yeah, I I, I echo what you say. I think Kushida was a very, very poor fit for NXT two point <laughs> Um, I think he's a tremendous pro oh, wrestler. God. Fantastic. Incredible. Not for that brand. He will do a lot better outside of that system than he would have in it. I can, as a man who was doing our NXT coverage back when NXT was good, I can tell you that the rare occasions they actually let Kushida work, I would sit there on those videos and go, why don't they let this man just work a lot more often than yeah. this? And then I would hope, well, this is a new dawn for Kushida. Perhaps something's going to happen next week. Perhaps we'll lead something. And it never, ever, ever, ever did. So, yeah. Godspeed, Kushida. You're free now. And you will do something good. Yeah, yeah. But as, as yet we should say, because he's left under freedom of contract, no word on the 30-day thing. Yeah. So you could see him as early as this afternoon. If yeah, you, if you wanted he might to. show up on our afternoon news video when a big story inevitably breaks just as we're all prepared to go home. He couldn't. He, he couldn't, could <laughs> he? He? Never He's know. not in the office today. He might be. We wouldn't be keeping that from you, would we? Nobody else is here, so he might as well be. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm a busy this morning. They guys. Might, they might look busy this morning. What, what could they possibly be doing? Have we got a guest in, perhaps, that they're doing a podcast with? Could that be a... Gracious me, you'll leave the scoop skis for later on, brother. Uh, major heel turn on Raw. I'm just, re I'm just reading the, the headlines. Uh, yes, last night's episode of Raw. A bunch of stuff happened, uh, as it always does on Raw. Two weddings on Raw. Would you ever believe it? Uh, There's two weddings on two Raw. Two weddings in one segment. But maybe we'll cover that on the podcast later. I'm not too sure. Um, either way, Rhea Ripley's turned heel, and her tag team with Liv Morgan has split up as a oh, result. Oh, everyone liked them. Yeah, they were good together. They had some. Ke it was weird because it was one of these tag teams that was just thrown together yeah, for it actually worked. reasons but they actually had like chemistry they seem to be having fun and now it's no longer a thing I guess there's, there's all this talk of Rhea Ripley joining Edge's Blue Man group um, yeah, we, we, which cool. might come from this but hey this, they, they had a chance another chance at the Raw sorry at the Women's Tag Team titles last night uh, they were defeated by Sasha Banks and Naomi afterwards. Uh, Rhea Ripley, as she's been in recent weeks, was like, Hey, Liv Morgan, that sucked. What's going on? Uh, and then she just beat her up, basically. No. So Rhea Ripley's turn to heal. Singles stuff now. You'd imagine they'll have a match. Uh, it is kind of a shame because, yes, they, they were pretty good for a thrown together tag team. They had a bit of chemistry. But, you know, when they put these teams together, you know this is going to happen eventually, right? Well, Andy, I don't know about you, but I personally can't wait for the singles feud for these two, which consists of a few really confusingly booked Raw segments, Liv Morgan somehow picking up a random win against her in another tag team match, and then it not even ending up on a pay-per-view. Yeah, there I, you can't, go. I can't wait for that <laughs> before a line is drawn under it and it's never spoken about again. They would never do that. Don't or, be so or, cynical. Or they might ape what is, in my opinion, the absolute pinnacle of this particular booking style in that Liv Morgan will just pretend it never happened and start being nice <laughs> nice to Rhea Ripley in a future segment. Why not? Why not? If you want a fantasy book, this what will surely be a wonderful feud. Let us know in the comment section. Uh, final story here. Uh, I've, I've, I've opened it. I haven't actually got the headline in front of me. So that it is that while there was two weddings, Austin Theory had sex with Finn Balor. Is that the song? Is that, <laughs> is that what I'm looking at here? That man is, he's, he slipped one in there. Um, oh, no, he won, sorry. He won the United States Championship. There we yeah. go. Hey, Austin Theory, who looked like he was getting a major push going into WrestleMania. He was very much the, came at the frog to Vince McMahon's Jim Henson. Read it that what you will. Um, he got the match against Pat. He, he got the big spot. It was the second second to headline spot on the second night of WrestleMania. Right. Let's not forget. Yep. But then it wasn't because it became the third to headline spot when he got beat off Pat and Vince McMahon inserted himself into a match, forgetting all about Austin Theory. And then Vince McMahon won that match. So Austin Theory was unable to defeat a man who was then beaten up by a 900-year-old haunted tree, which to me implies no push. But according to last night's Raw... 
Big Bush, because he's gone and won the United States Championship from Finn Balor, who, as you will remember, has been defending it every single week on television, one of the company's most fightingest champions. Mm -hmm. That run of holding that belt, surely something we'll be talking about for years and years in the story lineage of the United States. Oh, three in ten months. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, I probably should say that in advance. Um, so maybe they're doing something with the belt now. <laughs> maybe they can do something maybe, with the belt now. Maybe. They did a big thing after the match where, like, they did the babyface title win celebration, but for a bunch of heels. So, like, T-Bar came out of the abyss wherever he's been, whatever hole he's been living in for the past six months. Is that true? Because those, <laughs> like, that, 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 could just, that could be something you've just said. Like, oh, the demolition came out as well and started. It's the powers of pain. Yeah. No, Tugboat like... was twerking. Like, that, that's what that sounds like to me. That's that level. <laughs> that would put the ratings through the roof. Um, yeah, they did, like, a big put, celebration. Put the floor through the roof. With a bunch of guys afterwards. But it's the thing they usually do for, like, big baby faces. So it was weird. And then Vince came out and took a selfie. And, Sorry, I've got, I also yeah. apologise. I've been calling him Austin Theory. But yes. of course he's no longer called Austin no. Theory because of WWE's big push to get rid of everybody's personally owned copyrighted names. Yeah. He's just Theory. Theory. He's just called Theory. Theory, yep. Yep, there you go. That's crap. <laughs> I like, I preferred the original version of this story where it was that Vince didn't want people to confuse him with Steve Austin. Yeah. Which is absurd. Just like the story last year where, oh Elias, you look too much like Randy Savage. <laughs> To be fair, he does a bit though. I know, better get rid of that beard, pal, and come back as Ezekiel. Shave um, off those sideburns. Yeah, well, what's next? What will uh, Vince McMahon's next big mix up be? Let us know Hopefully in the comments section. Oh, gee whiz, right to your questions. Our first one comes from Adam Furious. Is that your Raging Burner account? Uh, yes, really, it is actually. Really yeah. pissed. Get yeah. on the Adam Furious. Uh, sorry, Adam, Adam Furious is what What Culture are making me rebrand as because I'm not legally allowed to call myself Adam Furious. <laughs> I am now just H. Like, <laughs> like, like the guy from Steps. Like Ian Watkins. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. From Steps? What's his name? Of course, of course. Oh, that poor guy, the amount of crap he must... Anyway. Imagine waking up that morning. People confused. Anyway. Uh, his poor mentions, man. I've done what? <laughs> Adam Furious asks, Morning, gents. Uh, with, all, with all this bollocks of creative having nothing for a legs of bliss, does it make more sense to toss her into Edge's new stable, the Blue Heels, the Blue Man Group, uh, over Rhea Ripley, as many are expecting that? So... I, 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 this. What is this? What is this weird obsession WWE fans have with throwing Alexa Bliss into stables as some kind of accessory? Mm. Like, oh, get her in the Wyatt family. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah, yeah. loads of black makeup. That's cool. Uh, put her in the new brood. Get her in loads of black makeup. <laughs> I'm sure there was somebody saying she should be in the new day. What? I'm sure. <laughs> well, remember, remember that mixed tag thing they had when she was like. Braun Strowman was wearing her like a hat. Y yes. Yeah, there was people times. She was just. I'm sure they had a match with. I, oh, I'm gonna get this wrong, but I think Big E was tagging with Asuka and Alexa Bliss sort of doing something with it. People just like get rid of you. People just want to see Alexa yeah. Bliss in a stable as an accessory. I don't know why. Yeah. But yeah, why not? I, I guess it's because, like you said earlier, she's very entertaining and she uh, she does throw herself into everything she does. Um, that, this would be a nice twist on the situation. Um, she's done kind of some kind of supernatural spooky stuff in spooky, the past. Spooky, spooky, so. spooky. <laughs> why not? Uh, our next question comes from the one. Whose avatar is Roman Reigns? This might actually be from Roman Reigns himself. Could be Billy Gunn. Could be Billy Gunn. <laughs> oh man, what an era that was. Uh, morning Legends, if WWE was to unify the Women's Championships, do you think it would it would main event SummerSlam or would that spot be reserved for Roman? I think hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I can get this. That's Bianca Belair and Charlotte. So far. Yeah. That yeah. is that's some slam, that's that's some slam main event for me. You reckon? Absolutely. I think that spot is Romans to lose. Um, against cynically. Who against though? Who against? Ooh, Cody Rhodes. Oh, yeah, yeah, all right, fair enough. Why not? Why not? Or Pat McAfee? Why not? He's the most fun guy in the world. Get him in. Um, Pat McAfee currently 50 50. Let's not forget. He is. <laughs> in classic WWE stuff. The guy went 50 50 in 20 minutes. Yeah, he got fossilized after that, that unfortunate win. Uh, Mike Petrowski with our final question of the day uh, oh, says. Yeah, that one from Monsters Inc. Lazowski? Lazowski. Is that the monster? Mike, I thought. Yeah. Sully! That's the one. That's no, not, it's not his picture. Yeah, he's got he's super oh, Superman. We got a, a question from Superman and Roman Reigns in the same day. My God, uh, if Kushida doesn't have a non-compete clause, do you see him joining up with Alex Shelley for a Time Splitters reunion this Saturday at Impact Rebellion? I think Saturday that's a possibility. Saturday. Yeah, we've already got him booked in the hotel over the road. It's Thursday, yeah. so plenty of time for him to fight. Oh no! no. What have I said? Yeah. Kushida's not here, by the way. Yeah. I just, I'm yeah. gonna ruin that for somebody. Um, that would be nice. Obviously, I remember when Alex Shelley came in. 
uh, to NXT for the tag title tournament. People were very mm -hmm. excited by that. People were like, oh, do you think he's going to win? I was like, no, I think they brought him in so Kushida can go out in the first <laughs> round and Alex Shelley can eat the pin. And people called me cynical and miserable. And then they yes. went out in the first round with Alex Shelley eating the pin. People love people love Times Players. Uh, it's not something I ever really experienced. I never saw any of it, but I'm aware of the love for it. And if that's one of the first things he does, now that he's free of WWE and NXT and all that, then good for him. I think that'd be really nice. That'd be a nice yeah. way for people to remember why they fell in love with Kushida in the first place before you start giving him, hopefully, some critically acclaimed spots. Yeah, I think that that would be a lot of fun. Uh, shout outs to Hollywood Hangman Adam Pierce back up. I always forget your full title, my friend, but uh, who slid in the mentions this morning suggesting that maybe we put Kushida in the Owen Hart Cup in AEW as well. Oh, hey! That'd be cool too. That'd be nice. That'd be fun. Anyway. Is, it, is it being called the Owen Hart Cup now or just the Owen? The Owen is the shortened version okay. of the Owen Hart I like Cup. But yeah, it's it sounds good. a bit weird though. Should we, should we put Kushida in the Owen? <laughs> yeah. it's, fair. it's a weird it's little, a weird little turn of phrase but anyway thank you for joining us today uh, you can follow us on Twitter at WaltCultureWWE which is where you can send us questions jokes insults whatever you want to send us apart from like stuff that will get you arrested because that will also get you blocked which is far more severe uh, you can follow Adam on Twitter at uh, at Adam Cleary C-L-E-L-Y I would like to say that a block by me is comparable to legal action in my opinion so yeah. you never recover from it you can follow me on Twitter at Andy H. Murray the H stands for Hassan Salahamizic bye Bayern player from ages ago yeah, long name cool.